Hello everyone, this is part 2 of my Urban Ranger series. So the first thing I did in ZBrush after I imported the 3D mesh was to fix up some imperfections. After that, I created a sphere and then shaped it to the first part of her chest plate. Then I simply added another sphere and shaped it to cover her breasts. Then I just keep adjusting both pieces until they look okay. Next, I duplicated the breast cups and shaped that into the third part. The strategy here is to keep things simple for now. These are just very rough shapes. I'm not gonna add any details until all the shapes have been blocked out.
Then I figured I did not like where things are going. So I deleted the parts I just created, and that's okay. At this stage, it's completely okay to add and remove parts as necessary. I'm just experimenting with different shapes for now. As I do this, I'm always moving the camera and checking from all angles. Some 3D artists don't move the camera much while they model, or don't move the camera at all which is a huge beginner's mistake. I just keep adding parts and matching them together, trying to figure out what works and what does not.
So here I'm switching the color of the model to black so I can see the silhouette or the outline of the character more clearly. When it comes to character design or even vehicle design or weapon design, the silhouette serves as the foundation for the design. Having a clear silhouette allows viewers to quickly identify the character among all elements in a scene. In nature, animals usually have a clear silhouette which allows us to quickly identify them from their background. In game design, especially in strategy games and MOBA games, a character's silhouette allows players to quickly and easily identify one particular character or one particular unit type among all characters running around in the game. Even in first-person shooters like Overwatch or Team Fortress, characters have very distinct silhouettes which lets players easily tell characters apart from one another. Character designs with no clear silhouette confuses the viewer. One example of bad character design, in my opinion, were the Transformers movies, especially the later ones. During intense fight scenes, audiences often can't tell the robots apart from each other because not only are their silhouettes not clear, but also their silhouettes actually blend and merge together into a blob. Here, for Drow Ranger, I'm checking to see if her silhouette is still identifiable and still looks feminine. I'll be doing this a lot throughout the modeling process. Now I'm adding some seam lines. These won't be the final seam lines, but I just put them there to help me visualize what the parts would look like with the seam lines on. I did say earlier that I will not put any details on and just block out the parts first. But this isn't necessarily detailing, it's just a quick method of visualizing what the part would look like later on. Next is her shoulder. I just used a sphere and then deformed it into a shape that looks appealing.
Next, I'm adding her color. Same process and same idea as before, just blocking out the shapes. Then it's her knee pad. And then her lower leg armor.
Next is her roller blades. Now, please take note that the roller blades here is their initial design, which is why they look different than the final result. So I'm just gonna speed this up. Now for her gauntlets.
I keep going back and forth between different parts. When I run out of ideas on one part, I switch to the other parts and then come back to the earlier parts with fresh ideas. What I'm doing now is masking out the area where I want to extract the thigh armor. And then I extract that area into a, a, um, a new mesh, which I then refine. Then I realized I did not like that, so again I deleted the part and started over. Next is her loincloth. I simply created a new sphere on her belly and then stretched it out. Then I masked the surface of the shape and then extracted the area to form a flat sheet. I continue to check the silhouette to make sure it's still identifiable. Her body still retains a feminine look, despite the fact that all we can see is black. 3D modelers can sometimes go overboard with the shapes they added, to the point that the silhouette becomes broken, or in other words, become very different from what was intended. Here I realized I did not like the knee pad shape, so I completely changed its shape into something I like better. Then refining the shape of her lower leg armor.
like adding a flare at the bottom. Then adding the shapes that surround her hips. Again, I'm not gonna spend too much time on the rollerblades because I did end up changing it later. Here I'm trying out some new shapes around the thigh. And then covering her butt with a butt plate, I guess that's what you would call it. Then I'm making the frame for her hood.
The idea for the frame is, if she's on rollerblades, it implies that she will be speeding through the streets at high speed. To prevent her hood from getting blown off, it needs a frame which holds it in place around her head. I know this is still a, um, a completely fictional design, but it helps to ground parts of the design in realistic logic. So at this point, I realized I made some mistakes with her pose, which is why I ended up returning to character creator to adjust her pose again. I wanted to make it look like she's on heels, so I tilted her feet a little bit to make them look like they're on medium height heels. Once everything is set, I saved it again as a new file, then imported that file into ZBrush and replaced the previous body. Since the body has been replaced with a new pose, I had to readjust the placement of her outfit parts to match the new pose.
Then I carefully changed the roller blades to that of the final design.
Now I'm making the fabric of her hood. It's just a simple shape which drapes over the frame. Next, I'm just fixing some mesh artifacts from Character Creator's base mesh. Even though her face seemed to look good in Character Creator, there's often some unwanted pinching and bulging in the actual mesh. Here, I'm removing those. Then I blocked out the shape of the hair. This hair will not be used to generate the final hair. It's only to help with the visualization because it really helps to see her face with her hair shape on.
Now I'm checking the overall design, zooming out to see if the shapes harmonize with each other. And that's it for this episode. On the next video, I proceed with part 2 of the sculpting process. If you like this video, hit like. If you don't like it, hit dislike. If you wanna be notified, hit subscribe. Leave your comments down below and share this video to anyone who would also like to know my workflow. And if you wanna donate to my channel, just head on over to my Patreon page. Donations would really help my channel grow and encourage me to spend more time making videos like these. Thank you for watching and enjoy.